Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelley and I'm the Irish foodie and today we're going to be cooking a bit of a special meal with steak and lobster. So we do have quite a few ingredients mainly because I'm making a dipping sauce and a side dish as well today. To start with we're going to look at these steaks. I've chosen a ribeye. I absolutely love ribeye. And then Dan has got a fillet steak. Then we've got some of our imperfectly tasty potatoes for chips. Some red wine vinegar. Garlic because everything just tastes better with garlic. A large shallot. A large white onion. This is going to be paired with some of that flour to make an onion loaf side dish which is fabulous. I've got some salted butter. You can use normal butter. Red wine. This is just any old bottle you've got lying around. Some beef dripping and that's going to go into our dipping sauce. And then I've plumped for a beef stock ready made. Some parsley. Some castor sugar. Some flour which is going to go into thicken in the sauce and that onion side dish. And then I've ordered two uncooked lobster tails. This is a first for me so we'll have to see how these turn out. So to start for my prep, I've taken that large onion and I've cut it into really thin rings with a very sharp knife. And then what we're going to need to do is cover this with salt. You can use table salt, but I'm an idiot and I forgot to buy some. And then we're going to give it a really good mix through and that's going to pull the water out of these onions. We're going to leave it to sit for about half an hour to get rid of all that water. Now while our onions are wilting we're going to make the batter. In this bowl I've got one egg, 75 millilitres of milk and about one tablespoon of plain flour. And we're just going to give that a really good whisk and then set our batter to the side. So after 30 minutes my onions have totally wilted and loads of the water's come out. I'm going to give them a really good rinse under cold water to get rid of the salt and then I'm going to tip them out onto kitchen paper because we can't have any moisture in them at all. So they're going to be tipped on here and then we're just going to leave them, push them to the side and crack on with the rest of our prep. Homemade chips always taste better if they're left in water for a little bit before you cook. So I've chipped these and I'm going to leave them in water to pull all the starch out. So I've got my lobster tails and I've got my kitchen scissors and I've actually sharpened these this morning. And I'm going to cut the lobster from front to tail, making sure that I don't cut right through the tail. Once we've made that cut, we're going to very gently pull the meat out just to sit on top of the shell while it's still attached. Because once it cooks, it'll look spectacular. So the lobster is going to be cooked in the oven and I'm making a marinade to put on it and it's got lemon, butter, garlic and then I'm using some sweet paprika. If you don't like a marinade you can just keep it plain because it will taste delicious. Now back to those onions. They are totally dry and I've just put them back in a bowl and at this stage I'm putting some sweet paprika onto them. This will just give a good bit of flavour to it once we've added the batter. Just make sure you put on a fair bit and then give it a really good stir and then we're just going to put them to the side until we're ready to cook them. So these ingredients are going to make our beef fat dripping dipping sauce. I've got 100 mils of red wine. I've got half a teaspoon of red wine vinegar. I've got one tablespoon of castor sugar. And then I've got 30 grams of butter. And I've got 30 grams of beef dripping. And then that's our shallot from earlier, all chopped really nice and thin and small. And then I'm going to use 500 mils of beef stock. So my pan is on a medium heat and at this stage I'm going to add 30 grams of that beef dripping that you saw before. We're just going to want this to melt down and that's going to be the oil base for this dish. And then to this I'm going to add two teaspoons of garlic because that will just add some really good flavour. So once your dripping melts and your garlic starts to sizzle then you're going to add your chopped shallot. And we're just going to give it a really good stir. We don't want anything to burn in this dish because otherwise it'll really impact the flavour going on. And once you've cooked your onion for a couple of minutes, you're going to see it's gone a lovely golden colour. We're going to want to add our red wine. So I'm adding 100 mils of red wine into the pan. Now at this stage, we want to add some flavour to the dish. I couldn't find fresh rosemary for loving her money. So I'm just using a pinch of dried rosemary. But if you can get fresh, you just want to use one sprig at this point and put it in your pan along with all that and just let it cook through and it'll release some really good flavours. So we're just going to want to give this a really good stir and keep the temperature quite low. We don't want anything burning on the bottom of the pan because it will really impact the flavour. So this sauce is going to cook 
quite slowly for 15 minutes to half an hour just to really get the flavors going in it and as I say we need to reduce it quite a lot so just leave this on a low heat and keep going back to it and giving it a stir every so often. So I've got two pans of oil in the background that you can see there and the, both of them are at 180 degrees. You don't want to cook chips on too high a heat because we want to cook them for about 20 to 25 minutes on a low heat and you end up with the best crispy yet fluffy chips. They'll taste amazing. And as you can see, I've removed the water from the chips and actually dried them because you do want to put water into a hot pan of oil, otherwise you'll end up with it spitting everywhere. So my sauce and my chips are just cooking and I'm moving on to my steak. I have to cook my steak separately because one of them is a fillet and that needs to be done in the pan and then finished in the oven, whereas the ribeye can just be cooked in the pan and then left to rest. So this fillet is going to get two minutes on each side. And then just to finish it off in the pan, I'm going to put some butter, some garlic, and if you had rosemary, you'd throw that in and just spoon it over the top. Once it's cooked for the four minutes, you're going to put it into the oven on 180 degrees for 10 minutes. So fillet's in the oven and ribeye is now in the pan and I'm going to move on to these onion loaves. Now I'm going to take those onions that were sitting before in the paprika and I'm going to pour my batter mix over the top and give them a really good stir. And then these are going to go into that green pan that you can see. Um, they're just going to be two kind of large clumps of onion, one per plate. Give them a good stir, drop them in very carefully. And then they're going to cook in that hot oil for about six minutes. So halfway through cooking, they're going to go brown on the bottom. You're going to want to flip them over and they'll go then brown on the top as well because we want a nice even colour on these. And as you can see, the oil is really hot, so it is going to be bubbling. So you don't want to overfill your pan at this stage because otherwise you'll end up with oil all over the floor. So we're just taking this nice and slow and steady. Okay, so steaks are resting and everything's nearly ready. I'm going to finish this sauce. I've got 30 grams of butter and one teaspoon of flour mixed together and I'm going to drop that in the sauce. Give it a really good stir. This is going to add some real glossiness to this pan and it's also going to add a really umami flavour. And then once we finish this, we can start plating up. And there we have it. So that's a ribeye rare with a lobster with a marinade of butter and garlic and all things fabulous. An onion loaf on the side, some home cooked chips and then we have that beef dripping dipping sauce. Absolutely phenomenal. A perfect romantic meal for two. Let me know in the comments what your romantic meals consist of. If you've enjoyed the video give it a like and consider subscribing to the page because I do lots of recipes, grocery hauls and meal ideas. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!